Fall is one of the most misunderstood times in Southwest Florida real estate. And today we're going to talk about it. Yo, I'm Adrienne, longtime Florida realtor, and I'm here to help you get your Florida life. Happy Wednesday, everyone. If you're new here, new videos come out every Wednesday. I do throw in some short videos and sometimes some home tours and other things throughout the week. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe. If this video helps you in any way, it also helps me out if you hit that thumbs up like button. Today we are going to talk about fall in Punta Gorda and Port Charlotte and what it really looks like and how that's not actually reflected in the real estate market. If you're planning on coming in the fall, I'd love to hear what your plans are. Please leave those in the comments. It always helps other people as well plan their trips. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Let's start with the weather. Now, our weather starts getting a little bit cooler, just like up north. It's not quite like it is up north. It's much nicer, I would argue. All summer long, our weather is 75 to 80 in the morning and then 90 to 95 in the afternoon with some rainstorms usually around 4 p.m. Now we still get a little rain this time of year, but it's starting to get in the low 70s in the morning and mid 80s as the high in the afternoon. It's very nice out. The humidity is a little bit less. The only way I actually often remember that it's fall is I start seeing people talk about sweater weather up north. We don't really get into sweaters until November, and we typically see it hit 50s or 60s in the morning and then 70s in the afternoon. That stays until about April. Very nice weather. We usually have two very cold days, somewhere in January or three cold days where it gets down to the 40s, and you will hear about that from me when it happens because I complain every single one of those days. So that is our fall. We also see a lot more people on our streets, if you do an activity down here like yoga, pickleball, tennis, you'll see those courts, those facilities more full, more people doing them. So you see a difference in the population. You'd think that that would be reflected in real estate. You'd think this is when the market would really start to rev up again. In fact, it's the opposite. This tends to be our quietest time of the year for real estate. First, I'm going to show you the numbers so you can see what I'm talking about. Then we're going to talk a little bit about why I think that is. These are the closed sales by quarter from 2013 to 2023. We're going to mostly look up to 2020 because it gets wonky once we get in a pandemic. But most people believe that now we are back into our regular patterns. So I want to look at the patterns pre-pandemic. Quarter one starts in January. All of these peaks are quarter two. Now this is closed sales and what you need to remember with closed sales are they start often 30 to 60 days beforehand. So if things are busy in January and February, March, when we get into April, second quarter, May, June, this we see the closed sales. So the big closed sales time is quarter two. And then it just goes down every year, three and four. We're going into quarter four. You can see how it slows down in quarter four. Just out of curiosity, I look to see if Florida, if this was a Southwest Florida thing or if it was all of Florida, and you can see it actually all over Florida. This is Florida closed sales. Again, we have quarter one, goes up in quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Same pattern on a bigger scale all over Florida. Now, I would tell you wherever you're going in Florida, you should consult a local realtor there. I do Charlotte County outside of that. I'm just kind of looking at the numbers. If you need a realtor in a different part of Florida, please reach out. I keep a list because a lot of my customers look in other areas too. And I like everybody to have a good realtor. Let me know, I'm happy to help out. Another misconception I hear a lot of is that you must get a lot of new listings this time of year. I do go on a lot of listing appointments, but some people do wait until January because the numbers do show us that those are that's a busier time. But let's look at new listings. So the peaks on this chart are all quarter one 
That's January and February. It's full on winter up north. The holidays are over and people know that the buyers are coming down. The lowest points are usually quarter two or quarter three. We're going into summer, we're coming out of it. You do see a little uptick in quarter four, which is coming up. We should see some new homes come on the market. However, mo a lot of people wait until January to put their homes on the market. And so if you're a buyer and you expect this rush of inventory to come in the next month or so, just know that if you don't see it, it's not that the market is necessarily returning to two years ago where there's no new inventory. A lot of people wait until January. Now let's look at pending sales. That's homes going under contract. We looked at listings and we looked at closings. When are they actually going under contract? I know in some parts of the country, we call it going into escrow. Here we call it pending. Again, I hate to beat a dead horse here, but quarter four, these, this is the low time. So we don't see as many sales in quarter four, a little bit here in 2017 and quarter three. But quarter four seems to be the low side of when we see things going to pending and sellers know this. That's why they wait to put their homes on the market. So quarter one, again, January, February, March, this is going to be, oh, we've got a quarter two beating a quarter one in 2016, but typically it is quarter one and then we get into the pandemic again. Before we get to my theories on why this is, let's look at sales price. I believe the whole reason any of us look at any of the numbers is because we want to know how much we can buy and sell things for. So let's look at the price. You will see that the quarter changes don't really affect the price that much. You see a little bit going up and down over time, but for the most part, if you bought property in quarter one of 2013, you're doing pretty well. It just continues to go up and up. And then we'll see the great leveling off is what I'm, I'm going to coin that term right here in the last couple of years. Why don't we see more sales this time of year? Well, I have two theories on it. First, we have the holidays coming and so many people move in and out of state here. That's a big move. It's a little bit easier, I think, when you're moving across town. But if you've got Thanksgiving you're cooking for, holidays you're cooking for, or getting the family together, to coordinate moving to Florida or moving out of Florida in that time can be very difficult. A lot of people just wait till January. The other thing I see, and this is going to be a little warning to buyers out there, I see a lot of buyers come down here and they get in their head that we're going to come down this winter we're going to spend the winter looking for property and they do but often they put off really looking until they are down here for quite some time i don't want to pick on anyone but behind the scenes realtors have sort of an inside joke where at a certain time of year, we get all these phone calls that are, oh my gosh, we've been out here two months and we're heading to the airport in two days. Can you show us a bunch of property? We forgot to look. The people who come down here in the fall and have time, I think they think we have time, we have time, we have time. I would say to you, get looking as soon as you can, then you can take your time. You don't have to buy the first time you go out and look for property. In fact, it's very rare that somebody does that you can then spend some time looking and, and getting to know the market. On the other side, if you're thinking about listing, this time of year I do a lot of listing appointments with people who are going to put their homes on the market in January. It gives you more time to prep. It gives me time to really come up with a strategy for your marketing. It's a great time to get that preliminary work done. If you have any questions, you know I'm happy to answer them. You can leave them in the comments or shoot me an email and give me a call. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.